Hello, I'm Will. I'm here with Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we've got issue 74 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest for you now. And this will actually be a two-part episode because the battle requires us to play the game three times. So we're not going to fit all that in one issue, in one video. We're going to split it into two. So there'll be links to that in the description or up above. Uh, this one comes with a Death Guard Tallyman, and this is in fact the completion of the Death Guard collection that comes with this magazine. But as always, if you want to skip straight to the battle report, there will be a timecode in the description. Having a look inside the issue, we've got the lore for the Death Guard Tallymen. Difficult to explain exactly what they are, but they have a multiple, several roles. They're sort of a spiritual leader, a bit like the chaplains of the Space Marines. They also tally up Nurgle's diseases. They're sort of uh, there to watch the progress of diseases. You can, the model has an abacus for adding up casualties and so forth. And they carry, carry around books and parchment for writing down all their findings and all this kind of thing. And then we're introduced to Sergeant Cronus, who is an Ultramarines tank ace, uh, who has fought in many of the recent Ultramarines campaigns, piloting various vehicles to great effect. Some of his notable actions there over the page. Then we have some information about Space Marine Suppressors. This continues our look at the Vanguard Space Marines that we started looking at in the previous issue. Uh, these ones have uh, jump packs and large auto cannons. so as their name suggests, they provide a lot of suppressing fire. You can also take on light vehicles and things like that. There's a description there of their equipment. Uh, it also mentions the battle for Niemengast, which against the Black Legion, which is the story of Shadow Spears, and we've got a playlist on that box set. And then Eliminators are another Vanguard unit. These ones are dedicated snipers, rather like the Sniper Scouts, but they have much better armour, full, full Space Marines, and they have a variety of weapons, they have bolt sniper rifles and also LAS fusils, sort of small LAS cannons. Then build instructions for the Tallyman, very simple, comes in eight parts, just clip him off and he goes together like that. And of course his painting instructions, uh, you'll be familiar with the Death Guard painting instructions by now. Not much new to add to him, it's just lots of different colours. But we're using the techniques we learnt in the previous issue to use nylac oxide on the gold parts and painting the coils of his plasma pistol with red. And that's it for this issue, we'll be on to the first of our three battles now. So, heading into our mission for this issue, we've got some uh, fiction and background here. The uh, Death Guard place great value in the number 7, as it is the number of the Chaos God Nurgle. You can see they're doing, uh, conducting a ritual across three separate ritual sites in an attempt to try and corrupt an orbital station that's stationed above them. And hopefully by doing things in the in 7s, it will create enough warp energy to corrupt the orbital station. It talks about Typhus and Felthus's plan to uh, turn the area into a big garden of disease in the name of Nurgle. And we've got this tally scroll here with a number of objectives that the Death Guard will have to complete uh, in, over the course of the three missions we'll be playing. But I'll come back to that later. So here's our actual mission, the Tallyman Cometh. So as the fiction stated, there will be three Death Guard forces, each with a Tallyman. Set up the battlefield as you usually do, and you start off on the opposite on the long edges, rather than the short edges for once. And it says here we roll off and each place an objective marker. It has to be more than nine inches from each other and more than nine inches from a board edge. As usual, you have to take a Battleforged army with a max power rating 50. Uh, players roll off. The player who wins chooses which deployment zone they want. Uh, you alternate deploying units, starting with the player who chose their deployment zone, and then whoever finishes deploying first can choose to take the first or second turn. Each objective is worth two victory points at the end of the game. You control an objective if you have more models within three inches of minute than the enemy. You also get a victory point for slaying the enemy warlord. Each game lasts for five battle rounds, and then it says here that if the Death Guard player completes their tally scroll in three games, they are victorious, and otherwise the Space Marines are victorious. So that brings us back to this tally scroll. So it has seven objectives, which the Death and the Death Guard have to try and complete, at least some of them each game, to try and complete all of them at the end of three. So uh, first one is to pass seven disgustingly resilient rolls in a single turn. Then there's fire seven supercharged plasma gun shots in a single turn. Kill seven ultramarines in a single turn. Uh, have seven poxwalker models die in a single turn. Pass seven psychic tests in a single game. Spend seven command points in a single game. Now, if you've been going by the magazine, you'll realize that uh, players can only have a maximum of six with the weird, not quite correct battalion detachment rules we have. So uh, we'll come back to that. And then score seven victory points over the course of all three games. And then if they Death Guard, as I said, if they Death Guard manage to finish all of these objectives, then they win. And just before we go and see where the armies we picked for our first game on the board, we've got the stat line for the Tallyman here. So you can see he's an elite choice and he costs four power. And much like the other four power Death Guard characters, he has the usual stat line. So toughness five, four wounds, three attacks, that sort of thing. And for his equipment, he has a plasma pistol and blight and crack grenades. And he has the usual death to the false emperor and disgustingly resilient. But uh, he has two extra rules. First one is festering zealot, which allows you to reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly Death Guard characters within seven inches of the model. 
And the other thing, the most interesting thing, is a sevenfold chant. If your army is battleforged and you have any tiny man on the battlefield, whenever you spend a command point to spend a death guard trash him, so that's not the command reroll, the auto pass morale test, or the intro uh, in the fight phase, you roll 2d6, and if you roll a 7, then uh, Nurgle has bestowed his blessings upon your army, and the command points you spent are automatically refunded. And that is how the death guard player is able to spend 7 command points in a single game, even though he only starts with 6. So we'll see the armies we picked for our first battle and see the battlefield and get into the game. So here's our first 50 point Death Guard army. Down here in the front we have Typhus, the Herald of Nurgle. We have the Tallyman that we just received this issue. The Malignant Playcaster. We've got a unit of 20 Poxwalkers. A unit of 10 Poxwalkers. The Fetid Bloat Drone. And we've got two units of Plague Marines. Uh, one, the one in front has a Plasma Gun, uh, the Champion with the Plasma Gun and Power Fist, and the Archon of Despair. And the one at the back has two Blight Launchers, and the Champion has a Plasma Gun and a Power Fist. Uh, I'm going to make the Tallyman my Warlord for this game. He's going to have Arch Contaminator as his Warlord trait, because he's going to be the one sitting in the middle near all the Plague Weapons. And for Psychic Powers, Typhus will have Putrescent Vitality and Curse of the Leper, and the Minigrant Playcaster is going to have Miasma of Pestilence and Blades of Putrefaction. And I guess my thinking for this army is, well, I've got two Psychers, because then that way I can try and get the one for casting seven Psychic Powers. Poxwalkers, because they go well with Typhus, but also because uh, then I might be able to get seven of them killed. The other stuff, well, we'll see what else we can do with this army, but those are the two main things I'm going for in this one. And here's our first 50 power Space Marine army. Uh, it's going to look very familiar because it's the same army as I had in the last battle. So we have the Captain in Gravis armor, the Librarian, two squads of five Intercessors, the Squad of Aggressors, the Land Speeder, the Hellblasters, and the Sniper Scouts. And I'm sticking with the Missile Launchers and multi melter Loadout for the Land Speeder because it's still pretty good against Plague Marines and I might need to assassinate one of the Death Guard characters later. And the Captain and Gravis armor will be my Warlord, and I'm going to give him the Champion of Humanity trait, because there's quite a few Death Guard characters around, uh, including Typhus, so he's probably going to end up having to fight one of them. And the Librarian's Psychic Powers, I'm going to give him Bale of Time and Psychic Scourge, because there's quite a few Poxwalkers they're going up against, so it might, should come in handy. So I'll do just a quick overview of the battlefield. So here we've got the Spaceport Pembert on the left, with a big bit of uh, area terrain in the middle with the ruins. And the city board in the middle with the big crane and some of the alchemite stack and some more area terrain near the big eagle. And the space walk pack mat here on the right with a bit of area terrain there. We rolled off and we placed two objectives. So William first, he placed an objective here in this area terrain on the, spe on the uh, Mechanicus mat. And I placed my objective here in the area terrain on the spaceport map. And we also rolled off to decide which deployment zones we get. So I picked this deployment zone and William got that deployment zone over there. So I picked deployment zone, so I start deploying my units first and we alternate and we'll just come back once we've finished deploying. So we've finished all our deployments, so I'll start down here with the Space Marines over here on the left. I've got a squad of Intercessors and the Aggressors, and then all the way over on the right is the rest of my army. We've got the other squad of Intercessors with the Librarian, the Hellblasters with the Captain, the Land Speeder and the Scouts. We use their concealed positions to deploy on top of this Thermic Plasma Regulator. And then for the Death Guard, we've got a unit of 10 Poxwalkers and the Bloat Drone, mostly opposite uh, my Aggressors and Intercessors. The rest of the Death Guard army over on the right, we've got the big unit of 20 Poxwalkers surrounding the Plasma Gun Plague Marine squad and the Tallyman and the other squad of Plague Marines with Blight Launchers in front of the uh, Malignant Playcaster and Typhus, as you might expect, is in the Teleportarium. So we've got a photocopy here so we can keep track of the Death Guard objectives as they go. So we'll use dice to count how many things have happened. And we've got our command point counters here. And uh, so we've got six each, uh, which is technically wrong because we both have battalion detachments. So in the actual rules, it should be plus five for a battalion detachment. So we should really have eight, but the magazine only tells us it gives plus three, which is why we only have six. I finished deploying first, which means I get to pick who goes first and I'll pick myself. So we'll head into Space Marines turn one. So I've finished all of my movement. Uh, this intercessor squad just moved out. I'm not really sure why I deployed them in cover. Probably should have deployed them here so they can go to the ammo boxes, but oh well. The aggressor squad advanced and I rolled a five, so they moved the 10 inches maximum to get up into the area terrain and contest that objective. And over here on the eastern side of the battlefield, uh, all my infantry just generally moved up the intercessors into the cover. Again, probably should have swapped them with the Hellblasters in deployment, but oh well. The Hellblasters are following up. The librarian just tucked in behind the intercessors. And the captain's kind of staying in the middle, so his aura affects everyone around here. And the sniper scouts and the land speeder have stayed where they are. So in the psychic phase, the librarian's going to start off by trying to manifest smite and uh, successfully hit that big unit of pox orbs. They're slightly closer than any of the plague rings, I believe. So he needs a five to successfully manifest it. He does with a seven. 
Yeah, I'm not going to try and deny it because I want Poxwalkers to die. Yep. So it's a D3 mortal wounds to the Poxwalkers. Two. And then we've got Disgusting Resilient on that. Oh, I've made one. So one Poxwalker dies and one Disgusting Resilient, which adds both of those tallies. Yeah. yeah so there you can see we're telling up the objectives. So next up, the Librarian's going to try and manifest Psychic Scourge. Uh, it's going to be on the same unit of Walkers. Unfortunately, the Plague Rings and the Tally Man are just out of range. It's got a Walk Charge Journey of six. Don't get it with a four. So we're on to the shooting phase. The Hell Blasters are going to shoot at the Plague Marine squad with the two Blight Launchers. So none of us are in rapid fire range. So we've got one shot each, hitting on threes, rolling ones. So Sarge gets a hit. Hell Blaster number one gets a hit. Number two, re rolls that one into a one and dies. Hellblaster number three misses, Hellblaster number four gets a hit. Three hits and one dead Hellblaster. Then I'll just take this Hellblaster away. And then our three hits are wounding on threes. That's two, I'll take that. There's no armor save, so Disgusting Resilient twice, two damage. So that's one dead Plague Marine. Uh, I'll make one Disgusting Resilient. Oh, I'll make two. So one dead Plague Marine and two for the Disgusting Resilient tally. So that goes up to three. Next, this Intercessor Squad in the Ruins is going to shoot at the same squad of Plague Marines. Five shots hitting on threes, rerolling ones because of the Captain. Reroll that one into a one, so that's three hits. Wounding on fives. There's one wound. Four plus armor save. Failed it. Uh, disgusting resilient. Oh, I made it. I'll, keep, I'll take that. <laughs> so it's up to four on that tiny now. Next, I'll do this Intercessor Squad on the left hand side of the battlefield. They're going to shoot at the smaller unit of Poxwalkers opposite them. We've got five shots hitting on threes, that's four hits, wounding on threes, three wounds. Three disgusting resilience, failed three, so that's three dead Foxwalkers and three for the tally. We're up to four dead Foxwalkers now. I'll do the land speeder next, it's going to fire two crack missiles into the fetid bloke drone. So we've got two shots hitting on threes, rerolling ones. I'm going to spend a command point and reroll that two, because I quite like the bloke drone to die. We roll into a two. Wounding on threes, because strength eight against toughness four. Spend another command point to reroll that. Right, that's a wound. Uh, eight minus two, or five plus one, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I made it. Finally, we've got the scouts. The four snipers are going to shoot at the tally man, and the missile launcher is going to fire a crack missile at the bloke drone. So I'll do the missile launcher first. One shot heading on three, rolling ones, because of the captain. <laughs> Come on. Rerolls into a hit. So that's a wounding on threes. That's a wound. Same again, 5 plus. Nope, went through. D6 damage, 5. Discussing the resilient. Oh, never made any so far. There we go, 4. So we made 1. So 1 for the tally and 4 wounds. So it's down to 6. And the tally is up to 5. So that's all of my shooting. So both of the Death Guard tallies will go back down to 0 and we'll head into Death Guard turn 1. So in my movement phase, um, well, we'll show exactly the results in a minute, but the blow drone advanced and I rolled a 3, but I'm going to re roll that with a command point. We're going down to five, and we'll see why. I'll show you why in a sec. But because of that, we, the tally man's rule comes into effect. So on 2d6, if I roll a seven, I get a command point back. No, three. But hold on a second, you might be thinking. Didn't you say before that this ability only works with death card stratagems and not the generic ones, like command reroll? Well yes, yes we did. The thing is, we actually recorded that introduction after we'd filmed the battle report, at which point we realised we'd been doing it wrong. Fortunately, I didn't roll a seven. Now re-rolling the advanced roll. Oh, into a one. So the reason for re-rolling it is because I wanted the bloke drone to be able to get within range of those intercessors. If you roll a four, it would have done. It is currently in range to attack these aggressors, but I actually want to keep them alive because they're a good way of getting my seven poxwalkers killed, which will give me a tally result. So I'm actually going to send it the other way. So the seven remaining poxwalkers over on this side that I want to get killed by the aggressors have moved up towards the aggressors. Yeah, they advanced. The bloke drone with its um, poorer advance only gets itself to there, so it's not actually in range of anything. And the big unit of Poxwalkers has swarmed around the crane like this. The Plague Marines with the plasma guns have moved up, they didn't advance. Sorry, yeah, the, the big squad of Poxwalkers advanced, they rolled five. Well, Typhus are brought down, obviously, at the end of the movement phase. The Tally Man moved up normally, just within range of his plasma pistol. And the Plague Caster advanced to there. These Plague Marines have moved up to here, and I've played Cloud of Flies on them for a command point, so I get to use the Tally Man's rule again. So down to four command points, and rolling again for the Tally Man. Wanting a seven, that's a nine. Has to be exactly a seven. Uh, on to the Psychic phase. Now, we casting seven Psychic Powers is one of my things, so we're going to get started with Miasma of Pestilence from the Malignant Plague Caster. And if it goes off, it'll go on the Plague Marines here with the Plasma Gun. So we're needing a six. That is a three. That is not a pass. And I'm not going to spend the Command Point at this point, because well, there's no, no need yet. And then he will go for a Smite as well. So need a five. That's an eight. I'll attempt to deny that, because I don't want to take mortal wounds. 
So I need a nine to deny this. No. So okay. that is a successful psychic power for the tally. Yep, so that's up to one. And how many wounds does it do? Two. So that's a dead intercessor. Now we'll go for Typhus. He's going to start with Curse of the Leper, so this needs a seven. That's a seven. Can't deny, I've only got one attempt. Nope, so the tally goes up to two. So I roll seven dice and I'm looking for fives and sixes to cause mortal wounds. Uh, just one. So I'll put the wound on this guy, the other guy who's in range of the tally man. And the uh, number of dead ultramarines' is tally is up to one for the turn as well. And then we'll go for a smite as well from him. Oh, he fails it with a four. So onto the shooting phase. We'll start with the tally man and his plasma pistol. Uh, it's going to shoot that intercessor who's the only model in range. So before he gets killed by anything else. I'm not going to supercharge, I'm not going to go for that tally yet. So hitting on a three. Yep, wounding on a three. No. We'll do this squad of plagues with the blight launchers next. They're going to shoot at the Hellblasters. We'll start with the Blight Launchers, uh, four shots hitting on threes. They have all hit. Wounding on threes, re-rolling everything, thanks to the Talonman's Warlord trait. Oh, they've all wounded. So three of the Hellblasters will be in cover if the man at the back dies, so I'll do him first. So he's got five plus armor save, which he failed. D3 damage. Now he's not dead. So he takes a wound, then hit number two, he saves. Hit number three. He dies, and then uh, we've got four plus cover save for the three remaining members, which we failed. I'll use a command point to reroll that. 50 50 chance, we saved. So, one dead hell blaster in all. And the dead space marine's tally goes up to two. Uh, then we've got the plasma gun. I will supercharge it because uh, I've got an ammo box, so two, two shots on threes. Three rolling ones, fortunately. Yep, two hits. Wounding on twos. That's two wounds. Five plus armor save because we're in cover. You, it's two dead hell blasters. And bolt gun. Uh, two shots, three rolling ones. It's two hits, moving on fours. Nothing. So these two hell blasters are dead, leaving just the sergeant. And uh, the only shooting left is the other plague marine squad. They'll shoot at the everything at the hell blasters as well. So then we've got two plasma guns. They are both in rapid fire of the hell, remaining hell blaster, and I will not supercharge. So threes. Right, so yeah. supercharge. Uh, wounding on threes. And there's a two, so two wounds. Yeah. So two five plus armor saves. Fell both, so Sarge dies as well. But that's the end of my turn because the Poxwalkers are uh, here advanced so they can't charge. Um, so the unfortunately the dead Space Marine tally is going to be five for this turn and that's it. So we'll head into Space Marines turn two. So I've completed my movement. Uh, this Intercessor squad has just moved into the cover. The front aggressor is just within range of the poxwalkers and he has moved slightly so I, he doesn't get to shoot twice because I don't want to kill all of those poxwalkers in one go, I just want to kill some of them. Well, I want to kill at least one, but not all of them. And over here on the eastern side, we're basically just going to abandon the objective. So the intercessors have moved out of the cover with the librarian and the captain advanced and he rolled a six, so he gets to come all the way over here. The landspeed is going to stay where it is and one of the scouts has dropped down from the plasma regulator so that his squad can benefit from the ammo boxes. So now we're on to the psychic phase. The librarian's going to try and manifest smite, so it will hit the bloat drone. Needing a five, getting it with a six. Well, I've got two psychics on the board now, so I might as well try and deny both his powers. So there's the first one. Yeah, that's stopped. Yeah, with ten. a ten. And then I'll try to manifest psychic scourge on the tummy man. Needing a six, getting it with a ten. Try and deny it, needing an eleven. No, that's an eight. Yeah, I'm going to re-roll that, so down to three command points. Oh, I better roll, so I'll roll for the tally man's thing first, so... On a seven, no, that's a six, so I don't get a command point back. Reroll the psychic test now, so... So now we roll off and add our leadership, so I roll a d6 and add ten, and the tally man has leadership eight, so I get a... Right. I get a sixteen, so I win. Yeah, you can't, I can't beat so that. So I do d3 mortal wounds to the tally man. Two. Then he gets a certainly resilient, of which he has made neither, so he's down to one wound. And with that over, it's on to the shooting phase. We'll start with the land speeder. Once again, it will fire two crack missiles into the bloke drone. Yeah, we just checked and the multi-melter is in, actually in range of something. It was actually probably in range in the first turn, but I forgot about it. So we'll put the multi-melter into this squad of plague range with the plasma guns. Do the missile launchers first. Two shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones against the bloat drone. Well, I better re-roll those. A couple of duds there. That re-rolls into one hit. Wounded on threes. Wounds. Five plus save. Nope. D6 damage. Three. Disgustingly resilient. Made one, so two damage. The disgusting resilient tally goes up to one, and the bloke drone goes down to four wounds. And then the multi melter on the plague marines hits. Wounds on a three. Wounds. I do get a six plus save because I got cover from the crane. Nope. Uh, D6 damage. Two. Disgusting resilient. Nope, failed both, so dead plague marine. 
Next I'll do the scouts, uh, the four snipers will shoot at the tally man and the missile launcher will fire a crack missile at the bloke drone. So missile at the bloke drone, hitting on threes, rolling ones, misses. Uh, I'll use a command point to re-roll that. Into a one, so it's a dud. So we've got three snipers who didn't move, who hit on threes, rolling ones. Rolling that one, into a hit. And then the one sniper that did move hits on four, re-rolling ones. You got a hit as well. Four hits, wounding on fives. There's a wound. Three plus armor save. No. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna re-roll that. So down two command points. Three, yes, he's alive. He's and, alive. And does he get a command point back? Oh yes, he must see it at seven. No, that's an eleven. I'll do this intercessor squad next. They're gonna fire their bolt rifles into the bloat drone. So we've got eight shots hitting on threes or running ones because of the captain. So after he rolls that six hits, wounding on fives. Mm -hmm. Three wounds. Three four plus arm saves. Failed two of them. Disgustingly resilient. Made one, failed one. So it's down to three and the tally goes up to two. So I'll do the aggressors next. Uh, the only one in range is this one here. Uh, it's going to shoot at the pox walkers. Uh, and he moves so he doesn't get to shoot twice. So we've got 2d6 flamer hits, 3 is enough, wounding on 3s, 1's enough. <laughs> Disgustingly resilient. Oh, I passed it, oh. so you don't kill a box walker. And the tally's up to 3. This intercessor squad are going to fire their bolt pistols at the same squad of <laughs> box walkers. So we've got 5 shots hitting on 3s, rolling 1s. That's 4 hits, wounding on 3s. 2. <laughs> Come on, boys. Just Disgu kill one. Disgusting resilient. Oh, you killed one. I passed the tally. Disgusting resilient, though. So the tally's up to four, and I'm going to have to six pox walkers. So the only shooting I have left is the librarian who's in range. He's going to fire his bolt pistol at the bloke drone. One shot hitting on three. Nope. And that is going to be it for my turn. Not going to declare any charges. So we'll be on to Death Guard turn two. So we've only got six pox walkers left over here, but they're going to throw themselves into the guns of the Space Marines to try and get themselves all killed. And then over here we're going to, well pretty much this turn we're going to try and kill as many space minions as possible. See if we can get that magic 7. So the Poxwalkers have moved up to be in charge range. Bloke drone has moved there. It didn't advance so I can charge if I want it to. These plague minions have moved up to the ammo boxes. These characters are all there in the centre. And these plague minions have moved to here. And I've played Cloud of Flies on them for a command point so we'll roll for the tally man's ability. We're down to one command point but I get one back if I roll a 7. No, that's a 12. So on to the psychic phase. Uh, both of these psychers are closer to the scouts, so the plan is to try and smite the one wound models off the board. So we'll start with the plague caster, because if he can take some of them down, Typhus might be closer to the intercessors. But first we're going to do Miasma of Pestilence on the squad of plague with the plasma guns. Needing a 6. Getting an 11. Well, I'm not going to bother. Not going to try and deny that, no. So psychic tally goes up to 3, and they have Miasma. And now we'll go for smite. 5. That's a 4. So Typhus had better have a go, so he'll try and do a smite on the scouts as well. Needing five. Oh, oh. Getting apparels. Getting apparels. Oh, well, right, we're going to have to spend the last command point to try and do that. Right. I'm hoping to save it for something else. So Tally Man first, see if I get that command point back. No, another double yep. one. Rerolling for the psychic tests. There's a three. So the power doesn't go off, but he doesn't injure himself. And you can now no longer achieve the uh, use some command points in one turn. No. Uh, so now we're trying to do Curse of the Leper instead. So this needs a 7, I believe. That's an 8, so that goes off. So I might as well try and deny that. So I need a 9. Get a 9. At this point we should have put the Psychic Powers tally up by 1, because the exact wording of the objective is Psychic Tests Passed, not Psychic Powers Manifested, which is what we thought it was. Just bear that in mind as you're watching the rest of the game. That didn't really go how I was hoping, but we'll move on to the shooting phase. Uh, we'll start with the Bloat Drone. It's going to fire at the Incessors right in front of it. Still just in its middle bracket. 2d6 shots, 7. Wounding on 3, 3 rolling 1s. That's 2 2s, that's 5 wounds. 5, 4 plus armor saves. Made 3, so uh, wounded intercessor will die and another one will take a wound. We'll do this squad of plague rings next with the plasma gun. They're going to shoot everything at the scouts. We're going to supercharge our plasma guns because there's a, a tally objective to get this. We'll do the normal man who isn't the champion. Three, three rolling ones, that's two hits. And champion, three, three rolling ones, that's two hits as well. So that's four supercharged plasma gun shots. Wounding on twos, that's three wounds. The guy on the ground dies, and then five plus armor saves because of our camo cloaks, and we have cover. Nope, so that's three dead scouts. And then we've got two bolt gunners as well. Four shots on threes, three rolling ones, three hits. Wounding on fours, one. Two plus armor save. Made it. 
And the dead space marine tiny is up to four. We do this the other squad of plague marines. They're also going to shoot at the scouts because they're one wound models and I need to kill models. Do the plasma gun. We're going to supercharge it again. Two shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. That's one hit. They have been fired, so that's yeah. the tally. Yeah, it's only to fire. It doesn't matter if they miss. Wounding on a two. Yep. Five plus. Nope. Then blood launchers, threes, re-rolling ones. That's only two hits. Wounding on threes, re-rolling everything because the warlord trait. It's two wounds. Four plus. No. no. So the scouts are wiped out. Bring the dead space green tally up to six. Uh, last item of shooting then is the tally man. He has a plasma pistol which he will supercharge, firing at the intercessors. Hitting on a three. It hit. He did not kill himself. Wounding on a two. It did. Six plus armor save. Nope. So that is seven plasma gun shots and seven dead space marines. So that's two objectives achieved for the tally. Right, well I feel good to have achieved two of those now, so on to the charge phase. We'll start over here, these poxwalkers need to get themselves killed, so they're going to charge both the intercessors and the aggressors. Okay, so two of the aggressors didn't move, so they get to shoot twice. You did check the rules, and it does say that uh, technically you don't have to shoot Overwatch, but uh, I think that's a bit too gamey, and no real soldier would ever let themselves be killed. So, so we've got 10d6 automatic hits on those six poxwalkers. We got 34 hits, so two matches of 17, wounding on threes. So that's 14 wounds, the first batch. And uh, this is going to be a good chance to get for him to get all of his disgusting resilient rolls. And the next batch of 17, 13 wounds, so that's 27 wounds. I do these as a batch of 14 and then 13, so the first 14. Five, six disgusting resilience made in the first mm. batch, mm. and the poxwalkers are also all dead. But I do have to roll the second batch because they will happen at the same time. And well, I've got another two disgusting, three disgusting resilience in there. That's another objective for the tally. So we've got six poxwalkers dead so far this turn, and we've also made seven disgusting resilience. Uh, so well, then the big unit of poxwalkers are going to charge those two intercessors over there, and I suppose the librarian as well because he could intervene. Uh, so the intercessors will fire their bolt rifles. Now we got a hit. That didn't wound. And then the librarian's bolt pistol misses. And their charge distance is eight. So they finished their charge like this, bringing the Librarian into combat as well. And the Blow Drone has also charged, it was right next to them, so I've just moved it in. So actually at the end of the charge phase, the Librarian's not in base contact, so he'll intervene. And the Captain will intervene as well. The Poxwalkers are going to go first, they've piled in like this. We're going to put all our attacks that we can on the Intercessors, so that's 12 Poxwalkers, oh no, 13 Poxwalkers. And then one of these uh, has to attack the Librarian, because he's not quite close enough. Do the attacks on the Intercessors in two batches of 13. Uh, so first lot hitting on fours. So that's seven hits so far, and I actually managed to move out of range of the Tallyman's aura for re-rolling hits, so that was a mistake. Second batch of 13. You're getting another seven, so 14 hits in total. These are wounding on fives, so because they're not close enough to Cyphers either. That's five wounds. So we've got five three-plus saves. Eh, I'll take one. So a regular Intercessor takes a wound. And then we've also got the Black Drone attacking the Intercessors. So in this bracket, it's only got two attacks hitting on fours, one of which did. Wounds on a three, re-rolling ones. Nope. Right, so now we've got all our hitbacks. I'll start with the captain. And we use his sword. Five so attacks hitting on twos, we're rolling ones. Rolling that one. Wounding on threes. Four wounds. These are all two damage, so what does it need to count disgusting resilient? You kill one, uh, two, three, four poxwalkers. So that will complete the tally. So we're just taking four poxwalkers off the back. I'll do the librarian's attacks next. He has four attacks hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. Three hits, wounding on threes, three wounds, so d3 damage each. First one does three. Uh, oh, just about kills a boxwalker. Next one does two. Kills a boxwalker. And one. Kills a boxwalker. And the intercessors will go, they'll put their attacks on the boxwalker as well. Five attacks hitting on threes, rolling ones. Four hits, wounding on threes. Three, two wounds. Discussing the event. And uh, one on one dies. So now we're on to Space Marines turn three. So over here on the left hand side, the aggressor is just going to move out uh, to sort of block off the objective from the more northern direction. Here in the middle, the intercessors are stuck, they can't actually fall back, there's not quite enough space for them to get out, so they're going to tie up all those poxwalks on the bloke drone. The librarian has fallen back, just so he can get closest to the bloke drone to try and smite it, and the captain has also fallen back away from the poxwalkers, further away from these Death Guard characters. 
and over here on the right of land, Speedo has just moved around in this direction just a little bit, so that he's now it is now closest to the malignant plague caster. Try and stop the Death Guard casting so many psychic powers. So we're on to the psychic phase. The librarian is first going to try and manifest Smite, and he's just closest to the bloke drone, so we'll hit that instead of the pox walkers if it works. Needing a five, getting a ten. I've got two denies, so I might as well try. Needing eleven. Nope. So that's D3 mortal wounds to the bloke drone. One. Disgustingly resilient. Nope. Takes a wound, just down to two. And um, for my next psychic power, the librarian is going to try and manifest psychic scourge on the malignant plague castes. Needing a six. Getting it with a six. Alright, uh, so I'll try and deny that. So I've got another one. Yes, yeah, so I've got it with a seven. Uh, that's alright. So we're on to the shooting phase, and I'll, I'll start with these two intercessors. They're going to fire their bolt pistols at the poxwalkers. Two shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Two hits, winning on threes. Two wounds. Just got some resilient. Made one failed one, so poxwalker dies. We'll do the important one next. The land speeder is going to put all of its guns into the malignant plague caster. So we've got the multi melter hitting on a four, re rolling ones. That's a hit. Wounds on three, that's a wound. Minus four, so 2d6 damage, picking the highest. Four. Four disgusting units in it, need to make one to live. Made one, so he's down to a wound. And then we've got two missile launchers hitting on fours, we're running ones. That's two hits, we're only on threes, that's two wounds. Two five plus arm saves, made one. D6 damage, six. So I'm gonna make all of these. No, uh, no, so he dies. Next shooting, the librarian will fire his bolt pistol into those plague marines. And he's only hitting on a five because of he fell back and miasma pestilence. Well, that's a hit with a six. Wounds on a five. Oh. And finally, this intercessor squad on the left is going to shoot at the same squad of plague marines. So we've got five attacks hitting on fours. Four hits. Wounds on fives. One. Four plus arm save. Made it. So straight to the fight phase where the two intercessors are going to put all their attacks on the box walkers. Five attacks hitting on threes, rolling ones. On the two ones. Get an extra hit, so four hits. Wounding on threes. Four wounds. Just the name again. Uh, failed three. Now we're going to hit back. I'll do the Pox Walkers first. Got seven Pox Walkers left, so 14 attacks hitting on fives. That's five hits. Wounding on fives. One. Three plus arm save. Nope. Uh, I will reroll that just to, to save an intercessor. I rerolled it into one anyway. So he dies and the Pox Walker comes back. Over there. That doesn't mean the bloke drone is now unengaged. But well, that will be the end of my turn. No morale tests or anything, so it'll be on to Death Guard turn three. So in my movement phase, we've fallen back from the combat with the Intercessor Sergeant. The Pops Walkers have gone over here, more than an inch away from him, more than three inches from the characters, so they can't directly intervene. The bloke drone has moved just to here. It's closest to the librarian. Uh, the tally man has moved up to here. He's near the ammo boxes now. Typhus has moved directly towards the land speeder, so he's now closest to that tank trap, doesn't impede his movement. I don't think he's going to catch the captain, he's too slow, the captain can just run away, so I'm just going to send him off to the land speeder, I think, and the plague over here will stay stationary. So, so, so on to the psychic phase, uh, we'll do Typhus, he's going to start with a smite, he's getting five, getting it with a five. I'll, I'll try to deny that, needing a six, getting it with an eight. Uh, I'm not going to try and use Curse of the Leper on the land speeder because it's toughness five, so I'd need sixes to hurt it. So we're going to try and do Futurescent Vitality on the Pops Walkers. Needing a six. Nope, that's a three. So on to the shooting phase, we're going to have to, the Plague Marines are going to shoot the land speeder because it needs to go. Starting with the Blight Launchers, four shots on threes, three rolling ones, and we'll hit. Wounding on threes. Ah, not so good. Two wounds. Two five plus armor saves. Come on, lucky land speeder. Oh, yes! We're <laughs> going to give it a supercharged plasma gun, two shots on threes. Two hits, wounding on threes, two wounds. Two six pluses, can we go again? Oh, oh. One, no, no, no so four so, damage. So down to two. And bolt gun, two shots on threes, where you're rolling ones. Two hits, wounding on fives, nope. I'm gonna do the tally man next, he's gonna fire a supercharged plasma pistol at the intercessor sergeant. Hitting on three, re-rolling ones, re-rolling ones. Oh, two, he's, he's all right, but he didn't, didn't hit. We'll do the bloke drone next, he's going to shoot um, at the librarian. 2d6 hits. 6. Wounding on 4s but re-rolling everything because of the tally man's warlord trait. Because it's only strength 4 now. Yep, so 3 wounds so far. 4 wounds. So that's 4, 4 plus armor saves. And we made 2 of them. So he's down to 3 wounds. And the plague marine squad are going to shoot everything at the land speeder because they need to. We're not in rapid fire range so we'll do the plasma gun separately, one shot each. So the normal man misses and the champion hits oh. wounds on a three oh. no 
Two shots with bolt guns on threes. They both hit. Wounding on fives. Nope. So the land speeder survives on two wounds. Uh, on to the charge phase. The plague moons will charge the librarian. Overwatch with bolt pistol. Misses. And their charge distance is a six. That is exactly what they need. So it has just enough to get the first man closer to the librarian. And we can send the bloke drone in as well, just because the extra attack might be useful. So it's charge. Yeah, that's enough. It gets to there, it's just still within seven inches of the uh, tally man for his warlord trait and re-rolling aura. So at the end of the charge phase, the librarian is going to heroically intervene, straight in. Puts him slightly further away from the captain, hopefully. I'll go with the bloke drone first. He has one attack, hitting on four, but re-rolling thanks to the tally man. So missed. And he missed. Pile in with the plague marines to make sure they can all fight. We'll do the power fist first, because it's most chance of killing him. Two attacks hitting on fours, re-rolling ones and twos, because of the way the death of the aura works. So one hit, re-rolling that one into a six, which isn't death of the false emperor, because all of it's because it's minus one to hit, basically. Uh, wounding on twos. That is two. Six plus arm, arm save. Nope, didn't make either. Not going to re-roll it. Okay, so two d3 damage out of six. So, so the librarian goes down. And we're just going to consolidate into the Intercessor Sergeant, so bringing him into melee, but I'm trying to prevent him from doing any mischief in his following turn. So Sarge gets to hit the Plague Marines, three attacks hitting on threes, two hits, wounding on fives, nothing. And that'll be the end of Death Guard turn three, on to Space Marines turn four. So my turn, the Captain is going to advance, he rolled a three, so he gets to here. The Intercessors and the Aggressors in the Ruins are going to hold position, and the Intercessors are all within rapid fire range of the Bloat Drone. And the land speeder is going to bravely hold position uh, to try and shoot Typhus, basically. And the intercessor sergeant is going to hold his position tight with these plague marines. So we'll start the shooting phase off with the most important one. The land speeder is going to put all of its guns into Typhus. So we've got the multi melter, one shot heading on a three, rolling ones. That's a hit. Wounded on a three. I'll reuse my last command point to reroll that. Whoop. No. And then we've got the missile launchers hitting on threes, rolling ones. Oh, come on, land speeder. Come on, get it in the box. That's one hit. Wounds on a three. It does. Uh, four plus save. No. D6 damage. Three. And disgusting is it? Made. Okay. Yeah, made two. So, yeah. Oh, this goes down to five. Do the intercessor sergeant next. He'll fire his pistol at the plague marines. One shot hitting on a three. Missed. And finally, the intercessor squad in the ruins will shoot at the bloke drone. So we've got ten bolt rifle shots hitting on threes, rerunning ones because of the ammo boxes. Eight hits, just get all those sixes and fives again. Wounding on fives. Yeah, there's one, that's uh, the usual distribution. Uh, four plus. No. Disgusting you return. Yes. Straight to the fight phase, we've got the intercessor sergeant again. Three attacks hitting on threes. It's two hits. Wounding on fives. One wound. Three plus arm save. No. Oh, I'll go on punch a cap. Disgusting you return. No. Yay. And they get to hit back. Power fist hitting on fours, we're rolling ones and twos. And two hits. Wearing on twos. Uh, anyone? Six plus arm save. Nope. D3 damage. For two. So Sarge dies. And just consolidating there towards the captain. And that'll be the end of Space Marines turn four. On to Death Guard turn four. Movement phase, Tallyman advanced to here to bring his auras with him, basically. So the Plague Marines move to there. The Bloat Drone also advanced, jumping over the help my stack. And the boxes have moved normally because I might want them to charge the captain just to prevent him from um, prevent him from advancing away. And over here, Typhus is moving towards that land speeder purposefully. Lightning phase, slight, eating a five, getting hit with an eight. Yep. Uh, new element cycle left. D three wounds. Ah, three. And right. It, does it explode on a six? You. Yep. Uh, and then we'll try and do um, putrescent vitality on Poxwalkers. It's just about still in range because it's easier to cast than Curse of the Lab. Manifesting on a six. That's a seven, so it goes off. So the tally for Psyche Powers is up to five now. Yeah, still needs two more. So onto the shooting phase. Uh, the Plague Marines here will shoot at the captain. Uh, the man with the icon will throw a crack grenade. Do plasma guns first. I uh, will supercharge them because I don't really have anything to lose at this point. I just need the captain dead. So not, not the champion. Gets one hit but dies. The champion doesn't get any hits and dies. So one hit, wounding on a three. Oh, we did wound. Four plus invulnerable save. Failed, so he's down to four wounds. Then we've got a crack grenade hitting on a three. <laughs> so the captain goes down to four wounds. And two plague marines kill themselves. Uh, we'll do the blow drone into the captain as well. Two d6 automatic hits. Six again. Wounding on fives, we're rolling everything because it's down to strength four. Oh, oh, that's three. Four. Four plus invulnerable saves. 
I made three, so we're down to three wounds. Uh, these plague range out of range, because the land speed's gone. The charge phase, the poxwalkers will charge the captain. Okay, I'll well, overwatch with this pistol. Three shots hitting on sixes, we're on ones. Oof. Two hits. Wounding on fours now, because we're just by Yeah. One wound. And disgusting him soon. Oh, right, yes, all right. In the charge distance, six. Uh, I don't know, we have to measure. So the poxwalkers finish their charge. And then they pile it in like this, they can all attack. There are eight of them now, because I've got one back, so 16 attacks hitting on fives, but re-rolling thanks to the Taliban. Rerolls. Gave me another three. Seven hits. Winning on fives, because he's still toughness five. Oh, one. Three plus on a save. Failed. So he's down to two. So the captain gets to hit back. Uh, I'm going to use the Bolt Storm Gauntlet because it's wounding on twos, whereas the sword would only be wounding on fours because the Poxwalkers have putrescent vitality. So he's got five attacks hitting on threes, you're on ones. Four hits wounding on twos. Three wounds, so these are damage each. First one, three. That's killed one. And then two. Oh, one lives. And one. Dead. So we'll take away the two on the periphery to keep him trapped in melee. Okay. Then at the end of the turn, uh, this plague marine with the icon has to make a morale test because uh, his squad took two casualties and he's only leadership seven. So anything but a six. That's a three, he's fine. <laughs> but that'll be the end of Death Guard turn four. On to Space Marines turn five. So in the final movement phase, uh, the captain's stuck where he is. The intercessor squad is going to move a bit to make space so that the aggressors can come out and we're going to try and hopefully kill the bloke drone and then charge the poxwalkers and save the captain. But I'll start the shooting phase off with the captain. He'll fire his bolt storm gauntlet into the poxwalkers. Three shots hitting on twos, you're on ones. They all hit. Only on fours. It's two wounds. Disgusting you Made one, so the poxwalker dies. Take this one because he's closer to the aggressors. Yeah, shouldn't have shot the poxwalkers. Uh, next up, the aggressors are going to fire their Flamestorm Gauntlets at the Bloat Drone, because it's the only target that they're in range, and they're all just in range. So we've got 66 Flamer hits, it's 10, 19 hits, so we're wounding on fives, six wounds. So three plus armor saves, all failed three, they're disgustingly resilient. Ah, oh, it goes down, takes two wounds. Oh, does it blow up on a four plus? No. So this intercessor squad, the four regular guys can all see the Plague Marine with the icon and Sarge can't see anyone, can't shoot the, the tiny man because he's not the closest unit. So we've got seven bolt rifle shots because we're not all quite in rapid fire range but we're rerolling ones. Reroll that one. So five hits. Wound you on fives. Nothing. Then in the charge phase the aggressors will charge the poxwalkers. Charge range is a nine. I think that's going to be enough. So the aggressors will finish their charge like that, and then they will pile in. We will bring that Plague Marine into combat. Don't want him to grenade the captain or anything. So we've got seven attacks, hitting on fours, we're rolling ones. We're rolling those ones. It's three hits, wounding on twos. They all wound. D3 damage. First one is two. That kills one. Next one is one. Doesn't kill one. Next one is one as well. Come on, boys. Doesn't kill us. Come on. And then the captain gets to fight next. Five attacks hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. They all hit. Wounding on twos. Four wounds. First one does three damage. One dead. Next one does one damage. One another dead. Next one does three damage. Three dead. And three damage. And they're all dead. Well, then this plague marine gets to pile in. Might as well. He can't get round to the captain. And he has an attack, hitting on three, re-rolling, it hit, wounding on a five, but re-rolling because the Taliban is close and his warlock trait, no. And that'll be the end of Space Marines turn five, on to Death Guard turn five. Well there's not much left to move, Taliban's moved up, uh, he might be able to charge the captain and take him out with the last breath of the game. Icon Man has fallen back because his one attack in melee isn't going to do anything and this way I can shoot the aggressors. And over there, Typhus advanced, he rolled one, so he's super slow, and the Plague Marines have moved to get the special weapons in range. The Bolt Gun Man is still within three inches off the objective. So in the psychic phase, we're going to try and manifest Smite. Uh, there's not actually anyone in range, but the rules for Smite don't say that you have to have a target in range in order to manifest it. You just, if there is a target in range, the effect is that it takes D3 more wounds. So, needing a five. Getting a five. Just. So that's six psychic powers cast this game. I'm trying to manifest putrescent vitality on the tally man, who is just about in range. Needing a six, getting it with a nine. So that's that, that tally complete. Uh, on to the shooting phase then. The remaining Blade Marine squad over there are going to shoot everything at the aggressors. They're the only thing in range. Uh, well, the bolt gun isn't in range. 
We'll supercharge the plasma gun because we don't have anything to lose really from losing the champion. So, oh, we got two hits. Wounding on threes. Two wounds. Two six plus. No, two dead aggressors. Both of the blight launchers are in range. So four shots on. Oh, okay. Not re rolling anything because I moved away from the ammo box. Wounding on three. It did. Five plus armor save. Oh, Sarge lives. Tiny man will throw a crack grenade at the aggressor sergeant. I'm not going to supercharge the plasma pistol because if he kills himself, I lose my last chance to get rid of the captain. So hitting on three. It did. Wounding on three. That did. Four plus. It made it. And finally, the tiny man will charge the captain. So the captain will overwatch with his bolt storm pistol. Ooh, nothing. And charge. Oh, 11. Yeah, it comes in like that. Um, he's probably going to die from this, but if it's a chance to get the point for Slay the Warlord, I'll go for it. He has three attacks hitting on threes, re rolling. Ooh, uh, three hits and Death False Emperor. Mm. Which I can re roll. No, he missed. <laughs> Wounding on fours, thanks to Putrescent Vitality, yeah. making him strength five. Okay, oh. uh, three wounds. Three sure. plus armor saves. Oh. Failed one, so Captain goes down to one wound. It's one victory point the Death Guard don't get. Yeah. And then I get to hit back. I use the Bolt Storm Gauntlet. Five attacks, hitting on threes, roll ones. Wounding on threes. One wound. Six plus save. Nope. D3 damage. One. Disgusting you resilient. Oh, you got me. You killed him. So Tiny Man dies. I get a victory point for Save the Warlord, which is totally irrelevant. And at the end of the game, the Death Guard will score two victory points for holding that objective. And I'll score two victory points for holding the other objective, but again, it's relevant for the Space Marines. And here you can see the tally list. You can see the Death Guard achieved five of their seven objectives. And they've scored two victory points towards their total of seven they need at the end of three games. They only managed to spend six command points in one game. So Tiny Man's going to be back. So we'll do a quick recap on this game, um, we'll probably do a longer one at the end of all three. So that was our first mission from issue 74 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How did you think that went? Uh, honestly, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I did not expect to get five of those um, yeah. tallies in the first game. As I said at the beginning, I was aiming for two, which was cast seven psychic powers and get seven box walkers killed, and then anything else would be a bonus. Yeah, and you, and you almost... I mean, you rolled pretty badly for your psychic test. You probably should have gone the seven psychic powers much easier. Yeah, I, I think I failed six of my first eight, or maybe one or two of those were denied. But yeah, my, my first two psychic phases, I only got two powers off, I think. Shouldn't, Three powers, actually. You shouldn't have been. You shouldn't have been down to the last psychic test, I don't think. No, and obviously I took two psychers because it was the easiest way of achieving yeah. that. Nearly didn't work out. And frankly, I'm glad I don't have to take two psychers again in another game because that would have been what I'd have to do if I'd failed to get them. Yeah, I'm kind of glad as well because <laughs> I don't have to play against two psychers. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, you were unlucky, specifically with Smite, which would have just gone straight through those scouts you were trying to get rid of. So one time I attempted to manifest three or two Smites and Curse of the Leper on the scouts. All of them, one, you know, doing mortal wounds to one wound models, and I failed all three of them, or I think you maybe denied one of them. And then I had to shoot a ton of things at the scouts, which I wouldn't have been able to shoot at other models models instead so that was uh, whatever the seven plasma gun shot seven supercharged plasma shots I, I, it doesn't say they have to hit or anything I just yeah. have to have all three plasma guns and one of the characters with a plasma pistol and shoot them all in one turn even if they blow up it doesn't actually matter yeah. so that one's a bit old I would because, say that one's pretty yeah. easy to achieve I mean unless for some reason you didn't take the plasma gun or the plasma gun on the champions potentially the hardest is kill seven space marines one where you might if you have a couple of turns where you kill five or six you might end up with not enough left yeah um, and the same with the pox war because, I mean, it didn't occur to me at the beginning of the game that I could get them killed by charging into yeah, the aggressors. It, it, it didn't occur to me either, right until I was rolling a ton of hits, going, oh wait, he can roll loads of <laughs> disgustingly resilient. Yeah, and I made it on yeah. just on that, so... It does technically say in the rules you can overwatch, it's not mandatory. Um, yeah, I thought... Like, I would never actually do that in a regular game. No, you would never not shoot at them. Yeah. No, I thought I was possibly not going to achieve the Pox Walker 1 at one point, because you did manage to yeah. reduce that small unit to 6. Mm -hmm. As it was, I actually charged a huge unit into a load of stuff, and you, I think you actually killed about... 14 or 15 pox walkers that, that turn in yeah. the end. I probably shouldn't actually have heroically intervened with the captain and just had him run away mm. and then he would have been he would have had an extra a few inches of movement. And yeah, and then obviously the end of the game just ended up being chasing your captain to try and get that extra victory point because I can't I have to at least slay your wall or at least once or capture more than one object you know, I can't just do I can't do a single objective three times because yeah. that's only two victory points. So that's only six. Because that would have made it plain sailing for the next two games. All yeah. I'd have to do was hold one objective twice, and that would be that. But no, I've still got, to, still got to fish for that. And the same with the Tally Man one. There's a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 7 on 2d6. So in using 6 command points, on average, you'd expect to get yeah. one of those. You'd expect to get your command point back, but I didn't. So have to bring the Tally Man again and try again. 
I mean, basically, it's going to come down to whether I can kill him before you can spend all your command points. So, I mean, in, in the next game, obviously, I'm going to go for that again. And hopefully, I'm going to try and get more than two victory points. So, probably going to go for um, an objective holding kind of army. Mm. Beyond that, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly pleased with where we are. I, honestly, I thought I might be maybe two of these tallies achieved, mm. like two or three. If this were a regular game based on victory points, I actually would have won. <laughs> yes, because you got Slay the Warlord and we had an objective each. Uh, so I know, you can call this one a moral victory. But yeah, I will say it didn't go as badly as I thought it was, especially after the first two turns, because my first turn wasn't very good. Although the land speed did it very badly until it zapped your plague caster. Yeah. I suppose uh, we could talk about the tally man. We've got to see his aura in action. I mean, with this collection, I guess you're probably taking him more for the getting command points back than his re-roll aura, which it's handy. It's handy with when you have lots of pox walkers. Well, it, yeah, it's definitely handy for pox walkers because they're normally hitting on rubbish. It, certainly, it's like the Terminators. I suppose it's useful for, or um, and, and actually, pl- Plague Marines in melee as well. It is useful yeah, for those. Yeah, quite useful for the power fist. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's quite a useful character. He's, I guess he's one of those where it's well, he's, he's another one of the um, four power cost characters, yeah. and he's he's definitely in the higher tier of those rather yeah, I mean, than he's not down with Biologus Putra as well for example if you're a heavy melee art based army you've got plague range of melee weapons then definitely help him and he, obviously he's got his regaining command points thing which which is always useful yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, even though it's only on a one or one in six of course uh, if you're using one that costs more than one command point you roll once and you get refunded the whole yeah. lot if you succeed but for these for these purposes I want to try and avoid using multiple command point stratagems because that way I only get to roll once and I need one command point back I don't need two back yeah. so it's fewer attempts to get command point back so yeah we'll leave that for now so we'll have another video with uh, the other two games of this uh, three game series otherwise if you like this content please leave a like and subscribe and leave any comments uh, any comments you have about the tally man or the scenario and that sort of thing let us know uh, we've been the tabletop donkeys and we'll see you in the next one bye for now